My name's Emma Patterson. I'm the Principal Solicitor at Patterson Law. I'm going to do a short talk on failing to stop and failing to report an accident. Um, this is a strange offence. It's probably one of the few offences under the Road Traffic Act that covers just such a huge breadth of different types of offences ranging from relatively minor bumps and scrapes if you hit a bollard or another court car as you're reversing out of a parking space in a supermarket right up to really serious allegations for example hitting somebody on a zebra crossing and then driving away from the scene so the sentencing powers um, can vary hugely and obviously hitting somebody on a zebra crossing would involve allegations of either due care or dangerous driving as well. Um, but failing to stop and failing to report does cover uh, very minor incidents, but also very serious uh, incidents as well. It's probably otherwise known as hit and run, and that's the most common way of, sort of describing it. But it, but in essence, what, what it relates to is having an accident um, and then not remaining at the scene and not reporting the matter um, to the police. Um, it's covered by section 170 of the Road Traffic Act, which is here, um, and it basically explains the duty of the driver to stop and report and give information or effectively exchange documents. And the obligation under section 170 kicks in um, when there's an accident um, owing to the presence of a mechanically propelled vehicle on a road. Um, and in order for there to be a duty to stop and report, there has to be either an injury caused or um, damage. And it has to be damage other than to the vehicle in question. So, for example, if you had an accident and you crashed into a rock at the side of the road and there was no damage to that rock but plenty of damage to your, to your own car, then you wouldn't necessarily be under a duty to uh, stop, exchange details um, and report the matter to the police. Um, the duty only arises if you co cause damage to something other than the, the vehicle that you're driving. Um, so you could, um, for example, hit a fence belonging to somebody. If you do that, then you're under a duty to stop and remain at the scene. And you're, the case law, so the the, the courts that have dealt with these cases and set precedent, the higher courts, have said that um, any kind of damage requires, uh, arise, uh, instigates that duty to stop and you must remain at the scene for as long as is reasonable in the circumstances to allow anybody that may have cause uh, to take your details to approach you. There is a good case that says you're not obliged to go knocking on doors looking for somebody. Um, and if it was three o'clock in the morning, there's nobody else around um, and uh, there's no obvious person to exchange details with, then waiting for perhaps five minutes may be long enough. But every case would be decided on its own particular circumstances. If you manage to find somebody uh, to exchange details with, to whom the property belongs to or to whom the injury is caused, then you must exchange details at the time. Um, and you must, here, here's the obligation in that regard, you must stop and if required to do so by any person having reasonable grounds for uh, so requiring, give name address, name and address of the owner and the identification marks of the vehicle. So you've got to render yourself contactable, mainly so that somebody can make an insurance claim. Um, if you don't exchange, um, then you have to report the matter to the police. Um, so if you don't manage to exchange details with somebody at the scene of the accident, then you have to report it to the police as soon as reasonably practicable. People often get this the wrong way round. They often say you've got to report it within 24 hours. But actually what the law says is that you've got to report it as soon as reasonably practicable or at least, or in any case, which is what it says here, within 24 hours. So you've got up to 24 hours, but you're supposed to report it as soon as reasonably practicable. Um, the punishments for failing to stop and failing to report an accident can vary hugely. Um, they're contained within the Road Traffic Offenders Act. 
um, and it can carry a prison sentence. So if it genuinely was a hit and run incident where perhaps somebody was hurt, everybody reached the conclusion that you knew that you'd hit somebody and hurt them and that you drove away trying to evade liability, then you could end up being sent to prison for this offence in the magistrate's court. It's only dealt with in the magistrates. That's what summarily means. It, it can't go to the Crown Court to be dealt with. Um, discretionary disqualification, so if the magistrates felt it was a particularly serious version of that offence then they could disqualify you for whatever period they felt was appropriate. Um, if they don't give you disqualification then the uh, endorsement of your licence is obligatory and the penalty point range is between 5 and 10 penalty points. So again quite a big uh, differential between the least serious and most serious cases but as you can see just hitting a bollard in a Tesco car park and driving away after causing damage could lead to you getting five penalty points on your license so that's um, that that's a lot of points for what is you know a relatively modest offense so the the basic rules are if you have an accident and it's apparent that damage has been caused to property other than your vehicle then you must stop you must remain at the scene you must exchange details with anybody who requires your details if you don't exchange details with anybody that requires your details then you have to report it to the police as soon as reasonably practicable or at least within 24 hours and just reporting the matter to your insurance company is not enough. You are committing an offence if you have an accident and if you cause damage and if you don't report the matter as soon as possible um, if you haven't exchanged it at the time or at least within 24 hours. So if you have a question about a failing to stop and failing to report accident, they're often associated with either allegations of dangerous driving or driving without due care. We're happy to give you advice on all of them. Most of the cases we deal with are fairly innocuous uh, bumps and scrapes in car parks. But again, it can be a very serious allegation and often people don't realise it's happened. And not realising that you've had an accident can be a potential defence. So give us a call. We will talk through the circumstances of the allegation. And it's 01626 359 800. Thank you.